Hello, and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about the debugger in Python. Um, honestly, I think this is one of the most useful tools that I have in my toolbox when I work on code, which is a, you know, an interactive debugger instead of print statements. Uh, I don't know, some people prefer print statements. I know it's very controversial. Um, but I'm going to show you the basics of using the debugger in Python today. Uh, let's jump into that. Okay, so for today, we're going to be working in pre-commit just because it has a significant size of code, and I spend a lot of time debugging this code base, and so I'm going to show you a few techniques for debugging today. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert our debug code into pre-commit. Uh, now note there's a bunch of different debuggers. We're going to be mostly sticking to the PDB debugger today, which is the one that ships with Python, and so you don't need to install anything else with it. Um, I find that it's, you know, it's it's not the best debugger, but since it comes out of the box, I've gotten pretty used to using it because I don't need to install a separate debugger anywhere else. Uh, but there's a bunch of other debuggers like PUDB or IPDB or, uh, you know, the PyCharm debugger or like there's there's a whole bunch of them, but we're, we're going to be focusing on the most basic one today. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a breakpoint into your code. A breakpoint is where your program will stop and it'll give you a chance to do debugging. So I usually like to do this right before a problem happens, uh, but we're going to put it in a particular file that doesn't actually <laughs> have any problems right now. Um, just I'm just going to show you how this works. Um, and we're going to put it in, uh, how about this git default version function? This seems like a good place to put a breakpoint. And uh, actually, I'm going to put it above the comment just so it's here. And I've, uh, if you're working on an old version of Python, you'll have to use this manual breakpoint statement. You would do import pdb and then pdb.setTrace. Uh, and you can write it on two lines if you want, or some people like to write import uh, pdb.setTrace. Any, any of these will work. Um, but this is kind of the old way to use the debugger with this manual import and set trace call. Um, and depending on your debugger, you'll use a different module here or a different call. Like I believe it's import pudb.d for, for pudb's debugger. Uh, but in, in newer versions of Python, there is now this breakpoint built in, which was introduced in Python 3.7. And you can just type breakpoint with paren paren, and this will default to that same import pdb pdb.setTrace. But I find that you know this is a lot easier to type and quite a lot easier to remember. You can also customize the breakpoint uh, built-in. I'm not going to go over that in this video. I'll probably do another video specifically about the breakpoint built-in because there's a bunch of there's a bunch of interesting things that you can do with it. Uh, but for this video, we're just going to use uh, breakpoint print print. There are also some other ways to trigger the debugger, like you can run a program with, with your debugger or you can enter a postmortem debugging mode. I'm not going to go over those, but I did do a video on them, so I will link that in the description. But anyway, now that we have our breakpoint here, we can run our code. So I'm going to invoke the executable that happens to trigger this code. And in this case, we're just going to do precommit run flake 8 all files, and this should trigger that. Cool. Awesome. And so this is what you'll see when you're uh, in a breakpoint. And actually, um, I can't really. Let me let me switch screens so that this is on the other screen. Let me pre-commit languages Python at the breakpoint position and pre-commit run flake eight all files. You can see we're at we're at our breakpoint here. Uh, and PDB helpfully points out what file and what line number and what function when it originally starts, but it doesn't give all that much more information than that. And I'm going to be going over a bunch of the commands, so it actually drops you into a little command prompt here. We're going to go over a bunch of the commands. Um, I'll also link the documentation about PDB in the description so you can check them out yourself if you want to. Uh, but at this point, there's kind of several things that you'll want to do your first time you run, and one of those is help. Help gives you a list of all of the various commands, and you can actually drill into each of them yourself. There's quite a few. Uh, fortunately, a lot of them are aliased. So like, for instance, n is an alias for next, and q is an alias for quit. Um, we'll go over that in a bit, and um, or those, those particular commands in a bit. Now, uh, there's two ways that you can get out of PDB, and I think quitting, <laughs> learning how to quit is probably the most important thing to learn first. Uh, one of them is to just continue running your code um, 
you know, on, on into infinity, and that is uh, done with C, which is short for continue. You can also type out continue completely, and it will, you know, stop debugging and continue running the rest of your code. The other option that you have here is to hard quit, and you can do that with Q or quit, and uh, that will raise a BDB quit exception. And Pregament has a special logging here that gobbles that, but normally you'll see a stack trace and you'll see BDB dot BDB quit. This is, this is what happens when uh, you quit the debugger. Uh, let's go back into this. So that's continue and quit. That's how you can get out of it. Uh, another question that I always have when I start debugging is, okay, I kind of forget where I am. Uh, let me let me figure out where I am. And what you can do with that is you can type list or just L uh, and it will show you the lines of code around where it's about to execute. Now note that it hasn't run this line yet. This little arrow points to where it's about to run a line. So you can see we're about to run ex equals find sys executable. And if you type list again, it will, you know, it will continue listing the rest of the file from this point onwards. And so you'll see like, you know, if you if you look at this, this is the same as, you know, seeing this source code over on this side of the screen. Now, of course, there's <laughs> obviously a few lines in the middle, um, but it allows you to kind of scan the source code. One thing that I didn't realize you could do for a long time is you can relist back up to this point. So maybe maybe you've done some other, um, <laughs> maybe you've done some other stuff here and you've kind of lost track of where you were in this source code. Uh, you can type list dot and this will again, jump you back up to where um, where the code was running. So that, that dot is important. There's also long list, which will give you a bigger chunk of code. And you can do that by typing LL. Uh, I don't actually know if there's a, another command for it, but I, I usually just do it LL. Uh, and that shows you a, you know, a, a bigger chunk of code around where you're executing. Another thing that you can do to find where you are in execution is to type where. This will give you a stack trace to where you're currently executing. So you can see like kind of a, a call stack of all of the function calls that led to where we're, uh, we're executing at. So you can see like if I were to go up one frame from where it called into get default version, um, you can see that's in repository.py on line 116. And so these are these are all the stack frames that led you to the current execution point. Now you can also like go up and down those to look at things and you can do that by doing up and down so if we go up two frames you can see now we're looking at uh pre commit slash repository.py instead of the the furthest one uh, and of course you can go down to go back to it and if you're already at the last frame um it'll tell you it's you're at the newest frame and of course if you go up to the top it'll tell you at the oldest frame uh, so that's how you go up and down stack frames uh, the most important thing, and this is where the debugger, I think, really shines in replacing print statements, is you can print stuff in your debugger. So you can poke around here and see what's going on. A few of the things that I like to print are locals. Uh, sometimes you can print stuff just by typing an expression on the command line if it doesn't match a particular expression. So you could do like locals or globals. Uh, of course, there's quite a few globals in this model, and you know, <laughs> globals is maybe not always the most useful thing to do. Um, but if you have variables here, so if we list, you can see that we haven't quite assigned exe yet, but if we step to the, oh, <laughs> I don't want to go over that yet. Uh, what's, what's the global that we have here? Emfter, uh, oh, tab complete is broken right now. Uh, let me scroll up in here. Environmentster, that's what it's called. Environment dir. So sometimes you can post, uh, print variables like this but uh, sometimes you'll need to use p to do that, and that will uh, print them. And this is, <laughs> sometimes your variable names will collide with the pdb command, so that's why I usually use p. Uh, you can also pretty print them. Do we have anything worth pretty printing in here? Uh, no, we don't, but I can import something from pre-commit. But actually, we can go up a bunch of frames and then pretty print something. So um we can pretty print this return value here so let's see we have ret and to pretty print something you do pp and that will give you a, a pretty printed output so normally if you just did p you would get kind of this unreadable blob of dictionary but pretty print makes this a little bit more readable sometimes it doesn't always make it readable but 
uh, I find a lot of times that it, it can it can be an improvement over a single P. So that's that's pretty printing and printing. Uh, let's go back down here. Um, next, I want to talk about stepping through the code. So sometimes you want to incrementally watch the execution as it proceeds through your code. And you can do that with a couple of different uh, commands here. The first command that we're going to show is next, which is, you know, just N. If we type N, it will jump to the next line. So you can see here that it was about to run this line, and now it is on this line. And so you can see if we print exe here, uh, it has assigned that to Python 3.8. So you can see you can see exactly what happened there. Uh, now in this case, if we do N again, you can see that it's about to run a return statement. So we're about to go uh, out of this function. Whenever the debugger returns, you'll see this return line and it actually pauses right after the return value and it will show the return value here. But if we do N again, you can see now we're in this other function here. Um, I'm gonna do continue and we're gonna restart this because I wanna show you the other, uh, another command as well. So we're gonna continue this, let it rerun again and restart this. The next command that we're gonna show is step which uh, its shorthand is s. And what step lets you do is if there's a function call, it will jump into that function call if it's pure Python code. If it's C code, you obviously can't uh, debug. You can't debug C code using the pure Python debugger. So if we do s, it allows us to step in here. And you can see that we're now inside of this find by sys executable function. And again, you know, we can press n to step through this function and see see what's going on here. Oh, there's some sort of loop here. Maybe you've, you know, done enough things to notice, like, this is exactly what you want. Oh, sys.executable, you printed that. Uh, okay, cool, that looks good, whatever. Um, you can step up through a frame uh, and run the rest of the function by doing r, which is short for return. Uh, and so what this will do is it'll finish this function and go back to where it was called from. So if we do return, you'll see that we are now at, uh, we have returned Python 3.8 from find by sys executable. And uh, if we do, I think we need to step one more time or next one more time, either way. And that will get us to where we're done with this function. So I find that return is useful if you've accidentally stepped into something and you wanna be like, oh, okay, never mind, I'm done with this function. Um, and that's kind of the basics of using the debugger. There's a lot more advanced stuff like setting breakpoints at runtime or conditional breakpoints or turning things on or off or other stuff like that. But I find that these set of commands is, is usually enough for me to do all the things that I want to do. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I use the debugger. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to cover in this video is how to uh, prevent accidentally committing this code because you know, in order to use the debugger, you actually need to modify the source and if you're not careful, you might commit that source and end up in you know, your source control. And I've actually written a tool that does this for you, that helps you prevent this. And it plugs directly into pre-commit, which I guess is another tool that I wrote. Um, and there's this debug statements hook that will prevent commits that contain either imports of debugger modules or breakpoint calls themselves. And it, it knows about you know, most of the popular debuggers and uh, you know, accepts pull requests for other ones that it doesn't know about yet. But you can see here, um, if I had put a breakpoint here and I went to commit that, git add dash u, git commit dash um, test. Oops. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> because, uh, because it's running pre-commit. Mm. equals zero. There's a way to disable this. There we go. <laughs> so assuming I wasn't actually debugging pre-commit, which runs pre-commit while, while committing, uh, the debug statements hook will tell you that a uh, breakpoint was called and it will fail and prevent you from committing. I did a little trick here that I'll actually go over in the breakpoint video as well. Uh, you, can, you can disable this breakpoint. So if you want a little bit more safety in production, you could disable it while you deploy there. But anyway, this is kind of a crash course on using the debugger in Python. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you guys have additional suggestions on stuff you want to know, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.